yeah so yeah so it was just you know they just thought it was too much of a departure from what we did before and I actually think that we may have lost you may have lost some fans you know for just for that one release I don't know. My thoughts were on that. You went from a very, very, some people would say kind of a little bit rough edge sound to some of the stuff. Like I said, it's more polished, more commercial, but that's the thing that was when the album came out. I was thinking, okay, this is the album that takes them and puts them over the top. Because it, it, you could play it. It had the same sound, if you will, that commercial sound that your Poisons, your Cinderella's, maybe not your Bon Jovi so much, but you know, your Def Leppards and all that had. And these are bands that were making all the big success. Yeah, and, and it was know, more hard ends than it was more hard ends than Dixon was when they came out with their stuff. Right. Yeah, it wasn't like, you know, like easy listening by any stretch. It was still hard rock, but it yeah. was you know, it wasn't like, you know, I guess what people were used to hearing from us. Right. So what happens after that? You do the Damnation Alley album and then you just basically, as far as anybody that listened to you, anybody that tried to follow you, you just basically, and the, the whole band, and you especially, just disappeared. Yeah, well, we just stopped doing stuff for a while. We just, we never said, okay, bitch is broken up. That was never, right. like, verbalized. It was just, we just kind of, like, stopped for a while or, you know, took a break, I guess. But, you know, it, it was just amazing because, I mean, other bands will stop. Like Vixen will stop, but you find out that Roxy Petrucci is doing this and that, and uh, Alita Ford will go out and find out later she has kids and she's doing that whole thing, and just different people doing different things. And Frank Benelli kind of goes from here to there, he plays with Wasp for a while, goes back to Quiet Ride, and just different people. Um, maybe even Joey Belladonna goes off after he get is leaves Anthrax. So yeah, Belladonna. Love Belly, Joey Belladonna. Yeah. and he goes and does solo and does Belladonna and just different people do different things, but you, you still could follow up. You just you disappear. Yeah, well, Is that kind of I like did, a break for I, you two to get out of the spotlight for a while or to recoup? Or? No, I mean, I did, I did like showcases. I didn't like stay off the stage completely. Okay. I did, I did this thing called Chick Singer Night a few times where it's like the house band and they learn three songs that you want to do. Usually I threw in a bitch song and a couple covers and, um, you know, just to keep my chops up and just, you know, exposure and I love being on stage. I do, you know, I'm famous for, um, I'm famous for, uh, uh, you know, jam sessions or jumping up on stage with a band, you know, at a club, you know, if they, right. they well, they have to invite me first. I don't just get up there without them asking. Right. Um, but, you know, I was always, I never, like, stopped vocal. I never, like, you know, took a break from singing. I just, you know, it's just bitch was just sort of uh, dormant, I guess, for a while. Okay. And still has periods of dormancy. Is that a word, okay. dormancy? Yeah, that's the word that'll work. Okay, what, what do you think it happened now? What was the scene back like on the Sunset Trip and all that for people who don't know, particularly for you guys? What was it like? It was fun. Every night of the week. What are you chuckling about? And you were there. You basically, being a metal, but you guys were really at the forefront pretty much of the whole scene. I mean, after that, Dawkins coming out, um, Bon Jovi eventually comes out, Poison goes from Pennsylvania to LA to get signed, Wasp is coming up, everybody seemed like they, you, even quite right, they were playing out there before, but they got the record album after you guys did, it's kind of like everybody followed you guys, and so what was that whole thing like with all that, and who did you, if you want to talk about who did you run into, how crazy was the scene out there? Uh, you could, you ran into anybody on any night of the week on the Sunset Strip. People were out there handing out flyers, promoting their band, Poison, Motley Crue, <clears throat> you know, you name it, everyone was, was out. It was when it was okay to do that. They put a, a, a ban on that since. Okay. Um, but, I mean, you didn't even have to go into a club. You just, like, walk up and down, like, between Doheny and, um, like, La Cienega, you know, have, like, um, <clears throat> the, the key club which used to be Gazaris right. and the rainbow and the Roxy and the whiskey and you know there's like this the uh, Troubadour the, well the Troubadour was on Santa Monica okay. but we did used to go there a lot that was actually we played our first gig okay. there with, with Great White and they were called Dante Fox back then um, <clears throat> and um, anyway it was just a, you didn't even really have to go into a club it was just you know the party was out on the street and people would just go and promote 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 they get all decked out in their stage clothes and um, you know and it was just fun you know any night of the week you could go to the Troubadour or whatever club and see a cool band you know there was here in the valley there was FM station which was fun and right. um, yeah it was it was a, a cool scene back then 
And then you go from um, that, from kind of nothing, to a little interview that pops up and eventually later shows up on the internet in 97, and then you kind of disappear again. Which interview was that? Um, I don't remember. It was just an interview. What was I wearing? <laughs> it was just... It was just what color was my hair? Uh, I think dark, very dark. That would kind of indicate what year maybe it was. I think it was about 97, and you were living with the guitar player at the time, and that was that time frame. You're saying, I kind of want to come back. I'm hoping to come back. What do you think? A lot of people have said this, and I've kind of always felt this, that the music industry basically, well, what were a little bubble gum with like Trickster and Nelson and stuff like that, but then when the Seattle scene came in, it was like the record industry just completely abandoned all hard yeah. rock and heavy metal, period. That actually was <clears throat> was a down, you know, time for us when like Nirvana was big yeah. and all the grunge acts, you know, that, that sort of put what we were doing into a gray area uh, uh, temporarily. Right. And so that was that, and that was about the time that we kind of dropped out a bit. Uh, okay. So that yeah, that had a lot to do with it. Um, yeah, people just weren't that excited about what we, you know, the type of stuff we were doing anymore. Okay. You go. What what got you to get the band back together? Because I know about three years ago, this summer in '05, you play, or actually, I think it was a couple years earlier that you played Bang Your Head Fest. It was '03. All three. All three. Okay. Yeah. And what um, what decided to have you bring get you to bring the band back together? Was it being contacted for that show? Was it just to yeah. put the band back together to play? Or that that was that, that was definitely um, a, a, you know a kick in the rear for us when when they invited us to play Bang Your Head. They rolled out the red carpet for us. They bought our airfare. They they paid our hotel accommodations. They we had a driver. Um, they set up interviews for us. We, I mean, we were not for want of anything. It was, and it was great, great experience. Uh, you know, we were backstage hanging out with Twisted Sister and Dio, and uh, you know, it was like a big heavy metal community back there right. for two days. Um, and that was just such a, a rush. You know, playing to like twelve, fifteen thousand people. You know, years after you know we we made our impact. And the European audiences are just phenomenal. I mean, they just, that's, you know, that's their way of life out there. It's not even just like a phase or a fad or, you know, or a scene. You know, that's their, you know, they, they love their metal. And they were just so, um, you know, the, the fan adoration was just so overwhelming. You know, we had autograph sessions after the show where people were just, you know, 12 deep and, you know, waiting and like six lines across to get our get us to sign something, you know, and right. um, it was great. So, so yeah, that, that definitely, you know, was the spark as far as like, you know, hey, you know, people still know who we are and haven't forgotten about us. And So did that inspire you to bring the band back together again? And what was the conversation kind of like with that? You don't have to go around Duff because that's a lot of family business with the band. But what was kind of the thinking after that was like, well, should we do this in our life? Let's definitely do this now. Do they want us back, or what was the thinking? Yeah, that? Well, you guys are back now. Well, it was uh, only with some personnel changes because the um, um, the guitar player David, who, who I mean, it was pretty much the original lineup that went to Germany, except right. for the bass player, of course, always the bass player. But yeah. we um, we had a friend named John Zell, who's like a professional. He's in you know several bands. He does all types of music and great looking guy, long, beautiful, flowing hair and. Anyway, he, he went to Germany with us, but he was never really a part of the band. He just, I think he just wanted to go to Germany. Okay. I don't blame him. Um, but anyway, after that, and then David, you know, when we got back, he wasn't interested in, in you know, keeping the momentum going. So okay. um, so Robbie and I reformed with two guitar players, um, Steve Cara and, uh, and Jay Dean, and a bass player from Abattoir, Steve Gaines. <coughs> and... Um, Tell them where the other ones are from. Uh, well, the other ones are originally from. Well, they're not the original members. They're they're side men for the Electric Prunes. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yes, they are. A yeah. Bit that's funny. going back ways. That's pretty <laughs> monumental too. Yeah, and, and they have other projects too. Right. Um, but that that's you know that that's the band of note that they work with. Of note. I understand you're working on the EP too. Yeah, we're we're. Slowly but surely, getting the recording started. We had the, all the songs are written, okay. and um, they're just now starting to track drums. 
uh, at our guitar player's home record recording studio. Mm -hmm. uh, he's got like a whole you know, major. Do you have any set. idea like the bitch is back with the vengeance and I'm here to stay or anything like that? Uh, say that again? Album tag, do you have anything like the bitch is back with the vengeance and I'm here to stay? Uh, that's, a little, like that? that's a little long. <laughs> yes, yeah, a little long, yeah. but you know. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, we actually we haven't really talked about that. That's a good question. What are yeah, we gonna call it? You could put like the bitch is back with the vengeance on the front, and I'm here to stay down it on the back. Yeah. Well, yeah. one of the songs, which is like I think the most killer cut on the on the release, is is gonna be is um is one of the songs is called All I Want Is Sex, <laughs> and so that actually now that I think about it, sounds like a cool album title. Yeah. All I want is sex. There you go. That probably would get a lot of exposure to yeah, Well, it would get us attention. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That would, that would, grab, that would be an attention grabber. Um, last, last couple questions. This is kind of always around the ed, the thing. Uh, what do you think it's the, the whole music scene is like now compared to back in the day after the whole disaster of the 90s? My personal opinion of the, the, the 90s was it was a complete disaster that should go with a lot of the uh, 70s because even the disco music, some of that was more talented than a lot of the garbage that came out in the 90s. That was one of the worst disasters. Yeah, it was sort of had. a nondescript era, I think. Yeah. I have very, I've got great memories of the, the 70s and the 80s. The 90s are kind of a, a blur yeah. to me. Not not because I was like wasted all the time or anything, but right. just because it was just, yeah, I mean, music wise, <clears throat> it was just sort of non memorable, incidental, I yeah. think. What do you think of it now with bands coming back? You got Rock, Oklahoma. You got South Texas Rock Fest, which is the same weekend, doing kind of the same type of thing. Um, I tried to get on that Rock, Oklahoma deal. We got to talk about <coughs> South Texas Rock Fest. Yeah. But yeah. what do you think about the way it seems like all the bands are coming back now? What do you think about what you're feeling when you go out and you talk to people? What What's the feeling you get? Because like I said, 80s was just phenomenal.